Hello, my name is Melissa McClaws. I'm a veterinary epidemiologist working with the EUFMD, and I would like to welcome you to this presentation. Veterinarians are faced with situations involving risk every day. For example, they might need to consider the risk of a disease spreading from one farm to another, or of changing a vaccination program within a farm or within a country, of importing animals from a different place, or of meat from certain animals entering the food chain. This presentation will provide an introduction to risk analysis in animal health with a focus on import risk analysis. In risk analysis, we consider that risk is made up of two components. The first component considers the chances of an unfavorable outcome happening, and we call this the likelihood or probability. The second component considers what will be the outcome or consequence of that unwanted event. Risk analysis is a tool intended to provide decision makers with an objective, repeatable, and documented assessment of the risks posed by a particular course of action. Risk analysis can help answer questions like, what can go wrong? How likely is it to go wrong? What will be the consequences of it going wrong? And what can be done to reduce either the likelihood or the consequences of it going wrong? In this presentation, we're focusing on import risk analysis. Why is this important? Because the importation of animals and animal products involves a certain level of disease risk to the importing country. Import risk analysis provides importing countries with a defensible method of assessing that disease risk. This information comes from the Terrestrial Animal Health Code, which provides a framework that we'll describe in this presentation. This, you can also find it in this handbook from the OIE, pictured on this slide. In the OIE code, an import risk analysis framework is provided that consists of these four steps. First of all, there's hazard identification, which addresses the question of what can go wrong. Next, there's risk assessment, which describes how likely it is to go wrong and what would be the consequences of it going wrong. Next is risk management, which identifies what can be done to either reduce the likelihood or the consequences of it going wrong. And all of this is underpinned by risk communication, which should happen between the authorities and stakeholders throughout the entire process. In the rest of the presentation, I'm going to focus on hazard identification. When assessing the risk of a potential import, the first step is to identify the hazards that need to be assessed. And to be considered a hazard, a pathogenic agent should meet three criteria. First of all, it has to be known to affect the animal species being imported or from which the commodity is derived. Second of all, it could possibly be present in the exporting country. And thirdly, it should not be present in the importing country unless it's subject to an official control program or there's zones or compartments of different disease status or the local strains are likely to be less virulent than those reported in the exporting country. Decision trees like this one showed here from Australia can be useful to decide whether or not an agent should be considered a hazard. As well as decision trees, it's useful to keep tables that summarize the rationale that is used to classify potential hazards. And here's an example of a hazard table from New Zealand that outlines the various criteria. And in the far right column, you can see whether or not each agent is considered a hazard or not. Once the hazards have been identified, the OIE code should be consulted to see if it provides sanitary measures for the hazards in the commodities under consideration. If so, those measures should be applied, and this can conclude the risk analysis. However, sometimes domestic legislation or policies would require that a complete risk analysis be undertaken. 
in which case the next step is to go on to perform a risk assessment. This concludes my presentation. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening.